Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I've been trying to figure out a way to get all of the different content and all the different services that I'm subscribed to put into one watch list that I can go to in a single place and get at the things that I want to watch quickly. I've been spending way too much time clicking through menus and not spending enough time watching the stuff that I'm paying for. And I found two apps that we're going to look at today. Uh, they're running right now on my NVIDIA Shield, but they're also available for the Apple TV, other Android TV devices, and the Fire TV devices. And of course, you can run them on your mobile phone or on a web browser. Uh, one is called Real Good, and the other one is called Just Watch. And both of these are not perfect, but they achieve what I was looking to do, which is to get all of the different services that I'm subscribed to, including some of the free ones, in one spot where I can tell it what I want to watch and it can tell me uh, where I can find the things that I want to watch. And what inspired me to start looking at this was something that Google recently added to the Android TV interface, which is this Discover tab. Now, along with this Discover tab, unfortunately, came a bunch of advertising. But the Discover tab for me has actually been relatively useful because as I scroll through it, I'm finding recommendations from Google's AI of things that I might want to watch. But the more I've been using it, the less satisfied I have been because it's recommending that I watch things that I've already seen, like The Expanse and Raised by Wolves here. I don't want to see those popping up on a list of recommendations because I've watched them already. And then the other issue is that it doesn't cover all of the different services that are out there. So if you go into your service selection here, you can see that Netflix is missing along with a bunch of other services. And that's what led me to start looking for these other apps. And I have to say, I'm actually somewhat satisfied with what I am getting out of them. And there's one that I like more than the other, but we'll, we're gonna look at both of them here. Now, both of these apps are the free versions of their offering, and they're not paying for this review. Uh, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. The only thing I will add is that this particular NVIDIA Shield that we have here on the desk was sent to the channel free of charge by NVIDIA a few years ago, but I have bought a bunch of these boxes as well. So let's get into it now. Let's start off with Just Watch, and then we'll take a look at Real Good. Now, both of these services will run on your mobile phone, and I would actually suggest getting the mobile app first and then creating an account so you can get all of your data to sync up. As you can see here, it's supporting all of the different things that I'm subscribed to, including some of the free services like IMDB TV, uh, some of those streaming things on Plex, which in full disclosure is a sponsor here on the channel, are also findable through this interface. And because I've loaded in some content already, it's starting to make recommendations for me. Uh, they're pretty good. They're not as good as the Google ones, but it is surfacing things that I'm not finding on Google because it covers many more streaming services than Google currently does through their interface. The one problem, though, is that unless you pay them for a subscription, it will surface things that you've indicated you already watched. So, for example, I told it that I have watched The Sopranos already, but it's still putting it up on screen here because I'm not paying them $2.50 a month. And that was a bit of a turnoff initially here for me. Uh, there will be advertising that you'll see on the screen from time to time as well. Now, what I'm gonna do here real quick is just type in uh, Star Wars so I can show you how the content is managed on here. So I'm gonna look for uh, the uh, Star Wars Rebels cartoon show. I'm going to select that. Now, this is something I haven't added to my list of tracked shows yet, but I'm going to add it now. And what it will do is it will ask me, have I seen all of the episodes, some of the episodes, or none of them? Now, in this case, I'm going to say I saw them all. And what this will do is keep an eye out. We know the show is never going to be on the air again, but just in case they add another season at some point, it will notify me that there is a season to watch, and it's going to add that to my watch list. I'm also going to like it so that it knows that this is the kind of show that I like to watch, and now that's in there. Now, if you're working your way through a show and you only watch the first season, you can tell it that you saw the first season only. You can also select individual episodes if you want as well. Let's take a look now, though, at the watch list, which you get to by pushing this button in the lower right-hand corner. And as you can see here, I've got Resident Alien on tap, and I told it that I watched the first five or four episodes, and I'm on episode five now. So if I hit the button here, it will launch Peacock and get me right into where I last left off. 
Uh, you also have some degree of filtering here, although uh, there are some features that are reserved for their subscription plan. So for example, if you wanted to sort your list by the shortest or longest show and you were paying for your subscription, you could do that here. Uh, but you can also sort it by the IMDB score, for example, and find the top rated shows to watch. But it's nice to have this because I can see all the things that I've stored to watch later that I might want to check out. And this way I won't forget about those things. Uh, you can also see what you've caught up on. So if you wanted to go back in and watch something that you've already seen, you can click that button. Uh, you also can look at what shows you indicated that you liked. Um, so you have a good amount of uh, basically a, a history of all the things that you've either watched or indicated that you have a preference for if you wanted to go back in again. But on the watch list here, uh, this is all the stuff that I haven't yet seen. And this is something that I think is pretty useful. Uh, they got a couple of other little features here, like what's coming up on each of the services that you added to your list at the top. And then you can filter it down by a specific one so I can see everything that's coming up on Prime Video this week. And if I wanted to add one of those shows to my uh, collection here, I could easily do that by tracking the show. So that's kind of a neat way to kind of browse through all of your services and see what's coming up. One thing I've noticed with Just Watch is that it doesn't do as good a job at finding things that are soon to come to these services as Real Good does. And I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Uh, but by and large, if it's on one of these services, you will likely see it here. But I found the database is not quite as up to date as what you'll see on Real Good. They also have a popular button here so you can see what other Just Watch users are consuming uh, during a period of time. Now for movies, it kind of handles things the same way. I can just click on the movie tab here and I can see all the movies that I have uh, put into my queue and I can basically step through all of them much like I would a TV show. Now on the TV app, everything is pretty much the same here. So I've got my list of recommendations. I have the new stuff that I can browse by service if I want. Uh, they also, of course, have the watch list and I can jump into my Resident Alien show here, hit the button and what it will do is load up Peacock after I execute it here and start playing the show. It does try to uh, mark it off automatically when you're done watching it, but I found it's kind of a hit or miss thing. So you might have to do a little bit of maintenance on your phone after you're done watching something to tell them that you saw it. Uh, but it does do a pretty good job of loading up the app and dropping you off where that episode is located. So overall, not bad, but I think Real Good might be a little bit better. Let's take a look at that. Now, like the Just Watch app we just played with, I do recommend starting Real Good off on your phone. So get your account set up here, and then once you've gotten yourself to a good spot, you can sync it up with the app that runs on the television. Uh, like Just Watch, this will run on Android TV devices, Fire TV devices, and Apple TV. And they also have a way to link up your Roku to it so it will launch the right app at the right time from the phone. But I don't think there is a Roku specific app that you can run from the TV at the time I'm recording this video. Uh, one nice thing is that it doesn't look like there's any cost for using Real Good. And I haven't seen any ads yet in my experience with it. But of course, that can all change at some point. Now they do have a nice selection of services that are available and they're nicely organized. So a lot of the popular services you'll see up here front and center. They also have a bunch of free services including IMDB TV and Plex and Pluto TV. So you can find all the different things that you're likely subscribed to or watching. And they've got a bunch of other stuff here on the bottom. What's nice is that Disney Plus here is synced up with the popular section. So if you select it up there or down here, it doesn't matter. It will uh, get recorded properly. Now, what's nice about the way that Real Good works is that if you have something on your watch list or you've already seen something, it will not appear in the recommendations, which is a nice improvement over what we saw with Just Watch, which requires you to pay for those things. They also have some neat little gimmicks here, like uh, being able to select programming with a group of people. If you're having a hard time agreeing on something, it'll try to create a search party so you can all uh, do something on your phones to find something to watch together. Now, if you want to add something to your list here, let me scroll through and see if I can find something of interest. Let's look at, I don't know, uh, let's do Leverage. I've never seen this show before, but it's got a neat title. And if I go in here and say Track It, uh, this will work in much the same way that uh, the Just Watch app works and that I can tell it that I've seen all of it, some of it, or none of it. 
I'm going to say sum just to show you how this works and I can say, you know what, I've seen it up to about here. And so that will exclude everything from episode 8 back and I can continue watching there. If I go over to my watch list, I'll have a list of all of the things that are coming up on my watch list. And I also have the ability to see what's coming soon. So you can see here the Bad Batch has a new episode on July 23rd and the Mandalorian is slated to return on December 24th. That should be a nice Christmas gift, right? Now, if you've got a show that you've watched in its entirety and then it has a new season two years from now, it will automatically reappear when that season is added. Again, you just have to go over to the coming soon to see uh, when those shows are coming back like we saw with The Mandalorian before. Now, one thing that I don't like is how this part, the continue watching part, is organized. I can't find a way of sorting this. It basically just sorts it in the order in which I added things to that watch list. You can, though, sort things here in the uh, all tracked television. So I could go newest to oldest here like it is by default. I can do it alphabetical. I can do it by the IMDB score. But I don't have a way of filtering out the stuff that I've already watched here. So it would have been nice to get some degree of organization to this menu here, which I think they could probably add fairly easily. But again, what I really like about Real Good is that when I'm going through these recommended TV shows and everything, I'm not seeing things that I've already watched or things that I am already tracking. So everything you get on here is new. You do have a way, though, of uh, turning that off. So if you did want to see things you already saw, you can go into the settings here and make those changes. But again, I really just like how intuitive this is and how I'm only seeing things that I haven't seen before. Now, the Real Good TV app is a little different than the mobile app, but what I like about it is that when you sit down in front of your TV, all of the stuff on your to watch list is front and center here when you get beyond what looks like an ad up at the top. Now, what I can do is go to Falcon and the Winter Soldier here and boot it up on Disney Plus and start watching. And you can also dive through the whole season here if you want to go to an episode more quickly. Uh, like the other app, this doesn't always get it when uh, you're done watching an episode. So I would uh, just maybe have the mobile app handy and just mark it off as watched after you see an episode. It's a little bit of garden tending with both of these apps, but I think the efficiency that you pick up as a result of doing a little bit of that garden tending is probably worth the effort. Uh, like the mobile app, we've got the stuff that's coming up soon. And then below that, we've got an algorithmic recommendation. Now you'll notice here that Battlestar Galactica is being tracked, but it's showing up on the list. And the reason is, is that I went in in a prior take and added it to my tracking list and it won't disappear until the next time that I go into the app. So you can at least see where you last left off if you've got a bunch of content uh, that you want to add to the mix. But like the mobile app, I feel like they need to add some more filtering and sorting options into the TV app. So just like what we saw on mobile, I just get a big blob of stuff thrown at me from my to watch list. And I would like a way to narrow this down based on what I'm in the mood for or perhaps how long something might be. So that would be something I would like to see. And also, if you go into your watch list here, you do get things sorted based on what you've already watched and are tracking. So for example, all of this stuff are shows that I'm watching but haven't yet watched. And then all of these are shows that I am tracking and have already watched. That's great, but I would like a little more granularity to the sortation here. And I think that is the big shortfall of Real Good. Uh, Just Watch does have better sorting options, especially for your watch list but it's going to show you things on the recommended list that you've already seen unless you pay them $2.50 a month. So there's trade-offs here. I'm not sure which one I like the best yet, um, but I like the fact that if you're looking for something new to watch, uh, Real Good is a little better in the sense that it is hiding things that I've already seen, which is nice. Another thing that Real Good is doing, and I'm gonna do a quick search here, uh, for a UFO show that's coming up on Netflix. And you can see that it's got it in here already and I was able to track that. And once it shows up in the Netflix database, I'm going to be notified as to when I can watch it. Uh, this does not show up on Just Watched yet at all. So I think the quality of the data that Real Good is working with is a little better than Just Watched is working with. So again, there's just 
pluses and minuses to each here, and that's why I'm going to be playing with both of them for a little bit longer. I would love, though, to hear from all of you as to how you're organizing your content, especially across all these different streaming service providers. And I was pretty happy to find both of these apps and find that they are providing some utility to me here as I have been trying to find some way to make my entertainment a little more efficient than it is at the moment. So let me know what you're doing down in the comments below and we'll be back with more stuff related to this and many other things here on the channel shortly. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.